Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another brand new Mattel Jurassic World set to take a look at. This time we've got the Roarin' Battle Pack. This is an Amazon exclusive, I think, and uh, it's a set that has just only recently begun shipping to people that had ordered it, so I'm really psyched to actually have it. Something that we were waiting on for quite some time. Now, if only that Hammond Collection female Velociraptor and Alan Grant set whatever ship, but you can see that the box art as far as what it's arrived in is very plain, not really exciting at all. And then up here on the top, the one area that I think is pretty cool is right here where it says Jurassic World Survival Instincts. I do quite like that, but let's go ahead, bring it back up here, and then we're just going to pull it open, I think, from the bottom here. Oh, we got to cut that teeth first. There we go. And then we pull it open, and if I can get the box out of the way here... You can now see what we have inside as we have a brand new paint variant of the Iguanodon as well as a brand new paint variant of the Scorpiovenator. And then up here on the upper part of the box, you can actually see some images of the set right there. Again, showing that this is a Dino Trackers release as well. So let's go ahead, pop each of these figures out of the box and check them out. And here are our figures as we've got the iguanodon and the scorpiovenator and i need to move it back a little bit there we go and you can get a pretty good look at both and honestly they look pretty nice like these actually look better than i was expecting them to from the original promotional images i was like thinking that even though they were definitely something i wanted to get a hold of it wasn't necessarily something i was all that excited about because the paint jobs didn't look that great and although i will say that especially when it comes to the scorpio venator i feel like the paint job still isn't all that great on it but it looks you know better here in hand than i was expecting it to and the iguanodon i really quite like the paint job of that one of course it would have been nicer to have more paint on it but that's just something we always say but as far as like you know the overall design i really quite like the darker tones and how they play off of the lighter tones of the body so let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at both of these right now so of course since we have reviewed these sculpts in the past we don't need to go over the actual sculpt or anything of either of these figures we have had different versions of them previously the scorpio venator i think we had one maybe two of i can't even remember at this point and the iguanodon we definitely had at least one of but as far as what we need to go over it would be anything that differentiates these from the previous versions and that of course would be the paint jobs so as far as the scorpio venator you can see we have a nice variation of a brown for the majority of the body and then you have an orange that kind of just designs all through the face and leads down the course of the neck you've also got a nicely painted eye with a yellow and a black pupil definitely a black pupil on this one sometimes it's questionable but this time it's very obvious and you also have a bit of a gloss coat there for the eye which looks pretty nice the teeth are painted with a nice white coloration maybe like a slight off white and then the inside of the mouth has a purplish tone and you can see that as well looks really nice we do have it for the upper side as well which is definitely exciting but on top of having that nice purplish tone for the inside of the mouth we also have a gloss coat and everything has you know really nice precise paintwork for the most part I'm not noticing any sloppiness at all as far as this one goes there's no alternate tone of color up here on the top of the head but as you move down you continue to see those orange kind of designs moving down the course of the neck as you lead back up here though you can see we have an alternate tone of color here for the lower jaw and that lighter tone moves down through the neck you can see a really smooth transition between the brown and that lighter tone we have that lighter tone continuing to move down the course of the body as we lead down into the arms you can see the arms are that same tone of color as far as that lighter tone of color and then as we move down a little bit further again i think the smooth transition is one of the nicest i might have seen from a mattel figure like that is a really really smooth transition down to that lighter color but as you move along the underside you can see that it does tend to disappear taper off right here past the groin which is something that is very common when it comes to the mattel line we also have that orange continuing to design a little bit further down here into the body but that as well disappears it actually disappears a little bit sooner than i would have expected because we normally at least have that coloration reaching like the hip region or something before disappearing but we don't even have have that 
on this one it doesn't even quite reach the hip region and uh, past that point the only other tone of color we really have is that brown primary body color and you can see leading out into the tail there's nothing else really going on with it it would have been pretty cool to see like maybe some stripes or something out onto the tail but we also don't have painted nails or anything like that for the hands or the feet but they do have kind of a glossy look to them slightly which does help them to stand out you can really see it on that one right there and even the dew claws also have that kind of slight sort of satin look to it and uh, again it's not the best version I would say the original version probably at this point would be the one that I would consider the best but uh, again it looks pretty cool I wish they would have used a different tone of color other than the orange because I think the orange just kind of blends with the browns a little bit too much for my liking but at the same time you know it's not that bad because it kind of can be you know, interpret it as one of those situations where, like, you look at a dinosaur or something, or even a modern-day, you know, reptile of some kind, and they have, like, just this obvious tone of color through their body where they just look like they're, like, a brown and maybe a lighter underbelly. But then when you get closer, you kind of make out some alternate shades of color included within their skin tone, and that could be kind of something that you take with this, you know, Scorpiovenator, kind of the way you could look at this one. But, again, it's not the best figure that Mattel has released, but I actually quite like it. And then the Iguanodon... You can see for the majority of this one we have a nice light tone kind of like a light yellowish tone for the body color and you can also see that we have a very strong speckling through this one and it's like incredibly strong through the majority of the body which I do like because it does kind of help to give it sort of like an alternate appearance as far as some extra coloration to the body. You can see we have a nicely painted eye with a black. The black also has a bit of a glossy look to it. The beak is painted out and the beak as well has a glossy look to it. It's the same brownish coloration that you see running down here along the underside of the lower jaw into the throat region. But I like that they did include a gloss coat there for the beak to kind of, again, differentiate it from the rest of this area. Definitely a nice touch on the part of Mattel. But as you lead up here to the top of the head, you can see we have a darker variation of brown that moves down the course of the body. And as we move down, you can see that it just kind of like erratically designs through the course of the figure. Like it's just all over the place. There's no real specific rhyme or reason as far as the way that it's designing through but I think it looks really cool because of the way that it's painted on it would have actually looked excellent it had this coloration ran the entire way out it would have been an incredibly nice looking repainted version of this iguanodon but even as it ends here you know it still looks pretty nice and you can see that the actual application of the paint is definitely nicely applied it doesn't look you know like paint or anything it looks like body color if you ask me and we also have that alternate shade again a slightly different shade of brown running down the underside of the neck into the lower part of the neck approaching the chest but it does cut off before we ever reach the chest unfortunately the underside of the figure doesn't have any coloration to it at all aside from that speckling but the again that appearance to that sort of speckling that we have to it really does add some appeal to the figure if you ask me definitely helps to give it a little bit more of a lifelike appearance in my opinion again no painted nails or anything but you can see that we do have that speckling running down into the nails which is a plus at least again just giving a little bit of extra color variation so not really a whole lot going on with this one either as far as the paint job goes but you know it's another version of the iguanodon i'm pretty excited to have a new version of this species in the Mattel line and of course the Scorpiovenator I'm a huge fan of that sculpt so I'm really happy to have that one here as well as far as a repainted version goes we will show you the Jurassic Facts app codes before we go and change positions here but there is the code for the Iguanodon if you are interested in adding that one to your collection and then the Scorpiovenator again just in case you wanted to add that to your collection but definitely not an absolute must-have set from Mattel but they're still pretty cool now I don't feel like we need to, you know, measure these, give them sizes or anything like that because again, it's something we've done in the past. I don't really feel like we need size comparisons this time around, especially again when you're a few repaints in of these figures, you really don't need to continuously kind of do that. It becomes pretty repetitive and I would say pretty useless when it comes to something that we're all pretty much aware of the size of. But we will go over the articulation and stuff like that because why not? And we also want to show off the sound aspect of the figures, but you do have jaw articulation for the Scorpio Venator. You also have neck articulation, which I don't know that I want to move too much because I don't really recall exactly how the action feature works and I don't want to set it off or anything. We also have arm articulation, which can go forward and back quite nicely, actually. You can also move it out away from the body. And then we have leg articulation, forward and back, 
very smooth, also out away from the body slightly, but not a whole lot. And then you've got the swivel for the tail, which as always is pretty much useless. And then we have the actual action feature itself. So I think what we basically do is we just push the body down. Yep. If I'm recalling correctly, it's been a little while since I had actually taken a look at the Scorpio Ovinator. So let's go ahead and do that. So you definitely have some really cool theropod style noises, pretty nice snapping action feature to the figure. And I do like the way that they have created these ones, these newer figures, where all you basically have to do is push the figure down and you, you know, get the action feature moving, which is really cool because you don't have any kind of like an awkward button or anything like that. Uh, that's going to take away from the overall visual of the figure. So I think that's a nice touch on the part of Mattel. They did a good job as far as, you know, giving these figures the ability to have a nice action feature without kind of including any kind of an awkward looking button or anything like that. As far as the Iguanodon goes, you have super nice articulation in this area. Like I absolutely love the articulation in this spot of the neck of the Iguanodon. You, of course, don't have an articulated jaw or anything, but you can swivel that neck and head around and move it all over the place, which is beautiful. You also have a spot of articulation here in the neck. Again, I don't really want to move it too much because I think that's going to be part of the action feature. You've got leg articulation forward and back. It can, of course, keep going, so you can definitely get some pretty nice posability with that area you also have the ability to move it out away from the body same deal for the rear leg again as far as moving forward and back a little jerky but still pretty smooth doesn't really seem to go out away from the body on the rear legs though but also for the tail again the same swivel that we had seen on the scorpio venator so let's go ahead and go ahead and do the action feature yet again Again, some pretty nice sound effects for your figure. Not really a whole lot going on as far as the action feature itself goes, but, you know, I mean, what really can you do with an Iguanodon? So, definitely pretty fun as far as both of these sounds and action features go. So, this is another pretty fun set from Mattel, and, you know, honestly, at this point, I feel like it's actually pretty exciting just to have something from Mattel, even though we get Mattel stuff all the time, but... It's been probably like a solid month or so since I had a Mattel figure here to review since the Hammond Collection figures, I think might have been the last ones, and uh, maybe even actually the Jurassic Park 3 female Velociraptor, but regardless, I feel like I'm going through Mattel withdrawal without having any new stuff because we had so much new stuff for so long since Dominion had come out and then the Dino Trackers came out right after and like we were just flooded with all kinds of Mattel releases and now it's been a little while, so... I really miss it, and I'm actually quite excited to have some new Mattel stuff here to take a look at. And again, even though it's definitely not the best set in the world, it is still pretty fun. I think both figures are really nice species choices by Mattel to include in a set as far as repaints go. We don't have all that many, as far, especially the Iguanodon. I think we only have one Iguanodon prior to this. And I think we actually only have one Scorpio Venator prior to this as well. So definitely exciting to see these two come back. And even though they're not the best repaints in the world, they're still pretty fun. I do quite like them. I feel like the Scorpio Venator could have been a little bit nicer if they had chosen a different tone of color to include with it other than the orange. Just something that would have really stood out a little bit more. Maybe a lighter tone that could have played off of the darker brown of the body a little bit better. But it still looks, again, pretty decent overall. Just gives the dinosaur a naturalistic look without being overly flashy. The Iguanodon, though, definitely has a really flashy look with the lighter tones and the darker tones and how they play off of each other. But at the same time, I feel like it's definitely a very naturalistic look for an Iguanodon. Both of them have fantastic sculpts overall. The fine detail is really, really nice and vibrant. We, of course, do have some issues as far as like the digits of the Iguanodon and not looking correctly. But outside of that, again, it's a really nice looking sculpt. Very highly detailed. Same deal for the Scorpio Venator. Both, again, have really fantastic, really vibrant sculpts. 
The action features are pretty fun. Again, pretty much your standard, and I love the fact that you just kind of push the dinosaur down to operate that action feature. I feel like that was a great choice on the part of Mattel. And on top of that, you've got some pretty fun noises, you know, to go with your figures and some really cool articulation on top of everything. So as a whole, even though it's not the greatest set in the world, it's still pretty fun. Definitely something worth picking up, especially if you are a fan of these two dinosaurs specifically. So I will include a link in the description to where you can check this out on Amazon.com, where I purchased my so make sure you check that link go grab this set if you are interested and like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching